There are days when machines just drive me nuts. You ever have one of those moments where you realize that we just have too much technology? I mean, really. We need machines to help us go to the bathroom, wash our hands. I mean, come on. When is enough going to be enough? So we just did an experiment in class and I asked them to produce all the cameras that they had. We had 11 people in the room and came up with 14 cameras. I'm Bill Jenneru and I'm a professor here at Kansas State University in computer and digital media technology. One of the things that I thought I would study is how classrooms are depicted on YouTube. It's kind of funny, really, because schools typically don't allow YouTube on their network. But it's a common theme among teenagers who are posting videos online. If we hope to learn about the current state of education, why don't we just look to what the students are saying on YouTube? Why do I have to have so much homework? Yeah, I remember those days. I hate homework, I hate school, and I can't stand it anymore! Well, I can appreciate that. School has remained largely unchanged for over a century. We mostly use a 19th century model of education that was developed along with factories with the aim of making good assembly line workers. So, how do you feel when you're at school? Let me tell you, it's not fun. Take a nap and it looks like you're wide awake. This craving for stimulation and novelty, it's nothing new. In the past, sensation seeking was found in just the struggle for survival, hunting. I imagine the successful hunters were men who enjoyed it, even at the risk of hunting large mammals, uh, mammoths and things like that. And when does it affect us most? Peaks in adolescence, like late, late adolescence, and declines with age. Students get so bored in class, they're creating their own entertainment. And they put it on YouTube. Whenever there's a free moment, he just left the room. <laughs> wherever they can find a place to perform. They are dancing. They're singing. They're doing pranks and stunts. And it's not just the student. War has always been fighting among men. As it still is related to sensation seeking. A middle school student is attacked by bullies and it's all caught on camera. After students broadcast word of a fight via social networking. At least two of the students use their phones to videotape the fight. Nowadays, almost every kid has a cell phone and almost every cell phone has a camera. Daniel, um, put it away. Okay. No pictures. No, I'm not taking pictures. No. I find it interesting when a teacher looks right at the camera. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. This guy has nothing better to do harass black kids in the hallway. What are they thinking? This is the culprit right here. Harassing black kids early in the morning. You saw that? You saw that? Either they don't seem to care, 
or they don't fully understand what is happening. Do they realize they're being recorded and soon will be featured in an online video? It's not a camera. It's going to be mine. Okay. No. A camera doesn't even have to look like a camera anymore. It can look like a laptop or an MP3 player or even a Barbie doll. And what could be more entertaining to a kid than secretly recording their teacher on video? Dominic, who taped this beating? Well, some of the students were taping as they say the teacher attacked that child. Take a look at this teacher beating a student and it's caught on tape, captured by a student's cell phone camera. And I am very regretful and sorry that this incident has ever occurred. The teacher on the tape has been placed on administrative duties pending the outcome of the investigation. The video was taken last week at Churchill High School at a pep rally of sorts. Students tell us the man and woman gyrating at the center of the screen are teachers. And if you thought students were the only ones operating hidden cameras, think again. A teenager in Pennsylvania says his high school spied on him by activating remotely the webcam on his school-issued laptop webcam. and using it to Parents watch... Parents of one student have filed a lawsuit against the school district claiming they were told by staff that the camera filled the their son doing something... The laptop is a part of our life 24-7. It is open all open the time. all the time when I'm changing, when I'm in the shower. This is FBI disturbing. FBI is reportedly opening a criminal investigation into whether that school broke federal wiretap law. always say there's no such thing as privacy in the internet age. I think we do have to say, you know what, we may have hit the point where this has gone too far. One of the ways that we can counter the bad uses of technology is to illustrate the good uses of technology, like in this Gotta Keep Reading video. Gotta keep reading Cause this book's gonna be a good book Cause this book's gonna be a good book These students are learning that when you have something good to say, good people will respond. Cause this book's gonna be a good book Cause this book's gonna be a good book Cause this book's gonna Many schools have blocked YouTube. Some teachers are using it anyway. They realize its great potential for engaging family and friends in the process of student learning. Mr. Dale is one of a handful of educators willing to put their classrooms on YouTube. I think he's a pioneer in education because of this. Throughout the year, he records his students, always making them look good. It's to the point now where I, I keep the video camera in my pocket. And at the end of the year, he presents them with a video yearbook that they can treasure the rest of their lives. Whenever I want something on video, I just take it out and I just videotape it. Education is improved when educators are willing to share their ideas. Education is an open door. Uh, there, there's, there's nothing to hide. Uh, it's public education. I post uh, the videos online and it gives other teachers ideas. When I plan a lesson, I jump on YouTube to see if other teachers have done the same thing and I've gotten lots of ideas. As a professor I'm very interested in, in learning what makes education tick because the one thing about being a college professor is we have a specialty. Mine's been computers. I've been doing computers for over 20 years. Nobody ever sat us down and, and taught us how to, to teach. One of the great promises of bringing the internet into the classroom was providing the ability for children to communicate with one another all over the world. If schools filter out YouTube, they're shutting out the world. Students are missing scenes of classrooms from around the world, like these. And perhaps more importantly, students are less likely to use digital video to communicate with a global audience in ways that are positive and meaningful. Students are using YouTube. Oh my God, my hair's like totally messy. The question is, are they being led? Or are they simply finding their own way? Yay! Okay, bye! <laughs>